praise the Lord. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to cover some things tonight, and uh, we're going to cover five areas of contention in marriage. And, uh, at least. At least. You know, like Brother Hagin used to say, <laughs> Brother Hagin used to say, you know, him and Miss Aretha had been married such and such years, half and, half, off, off and, and on, on, for like 40 years. He's in marital bliss. Yeah, in marital bliss. But so Sheila and I have been happily married most of the time. Amen. For 50 years. Almost 52. Uh, well, no, we've already been married 50 years. Yeah, 52 it's years. almost 52 this year. It'll be 52. Yeah. So praise God, I still feel young It's and easy to keep up Lord. with because we got married in 1970. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Had some ups and downs, and we survived. Amen. Yes. I wish somebody would have taught me this, uh, you know, before we got married or even after we got married. <coughs> and uh, it would have saved a lot of heartache. You know, it, you know, just being saved going to save some heartache. Right. Amen. But, Amen. but you know, when I got saved, you know, I tried to force Sheila, you know, because the Bible says that the woman's supposed to submit to the man. You know what it says? <laughs> Amen. So I, I, I tried to get her to submit to me. Amen. And if anybody knows Sheila Bell, amen, ain't nobody going to make her do nothing except the Holy Ghost. <laughs> amen. So, so we had some contentions. I got saved, and you know, and I got... When I got saved, I got serious about it. If I read in the Bible, I'd try to put it to work, amen. And I saw in there where woman, you know, submit thyself to thy husband, amen. And, uh, well, that she said, she, she, well, anyway, she didn't do it. I don't remember what she said. I know she loved God, but eventually, the thing. but, you know, the thing about it was that, you know, if I loved her like the Bible tells me to, you know, the Bible tells us that, you know, the, that the husband, you know, we give our life. You know, I give my life for her. And if we would love her like Christ loves the church, there would be no problem of her submitting to me. No problem of her, you know, you know uh, treating me like the Bible says. But when you got two stubborn people, amen, and, and neither one of them is going to give, and neither one of them is going to yield to the Spirit of God, then you've got a problem. Yeah. And most of the time it's going to end up in divorce. And I was a stay-at-home mom, so, you know, if you've ever stayed home with two two little ones, and Brad was three when Brooke was born, and so, you know, they make a mess. I mean, they mm-hmm. make a mess. You clean it up, they make another one. And so, you know, finally you say, I'll wait until they go to bed, then I'll clean up the mess. You know, it's, it's, you're wasting your time. So when, this is right after he got saved, and I remember thinking, I thought everything was supposed to get better <laughs> when he gets saved and we would start serving Jesus, but it didn't get better. I'm telling you, we we were having some head buttons going on. And so, you know what? I had to learn that Jesus is Lord and John's not. Right. And that, he, you're, he's, that he's not the Holy Ghost, neither am I. And so, so what happens is you got to learn how, you got to renew your mind because yes. you don't just get born again and all of a sudden you start thinking, you start walking in love. You, you know, it takes a mature Christian to walk in love. Mm-hmm. And when you're, when you're a baby Christian, you don't know the first thing about walking in love. You keep being carnal like you were, like he got saved Sunday. Well, yesterday we were both very carnal. Well, today, Sunday, we're still very carnal. We had, our mind is not renewed at all to the Word of God. So we both begin to read the Bible and pray and study and, you know, and ask the Lord to help us. And we began to grow, but it took a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. And it even seemed like our marriage got worse after we, we decided to serve God than it was before. And so maybe we expected more of each other then than, than well, before. Well, I know we did. I know yeah. exactly we did. And so he comes home from work one day, and we have a wood heater. Back in 1974, I don't know if y'all remember it, how some of y'all might, some of you might not. Electricity went out the roof. I mean, it went way, way up, and we had electric heaters, and we couldn't pay the bill. It was, uh, un- it was up like $300 back in 1974. That was a lot of money. And so we went and bought a wood heater and put it in a, a Ashley wood heater. And so we put, it in, the dining we put room. it in the dining room, and that's what we heated the house with. Well, when you load the wood heater, you make a mess every single time you make a mess. So he comes in, and there's a mess in front of the heater. And he says something smart about me not keeping the house. <laughs> and it made me so mad. I mean, if I, if I wanted, if I, I want a pen, clean I house and food on the table. I him in the mouth. <laughs> I, it made me so mad. And I said, let me tell you something, because... 
he was like the head honcho down at Goodwill Industries in Jasper. And so I said, let me tell you something. I don't tell you how to run Goodwill, and you're not going to come here and tell me how to run this house. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was just things like that. And I said, Lord, that, you take care of her. <laughs> she ain't submitting to me. <laughs> but until she does, I'll sweep the floor myself. So we were, had a little bit of contention after we decided with, you know, after and, and so and all our, of you married people, you know, I'm sure you can maybe can testify the same thing. I don't know for sure. But there is some adjusting that, that has to be made. Yeah. And, uh, and so there's things that, you know, that we have to change the way we think. Right. You know, because you're living with somebody, and even though you might have been married for four weeks on our seventh wedding anniversary. Yeah. When I got saved, so we'd been married seven years. Seven years, two kids later. Yeah, and, and two kids later. And, uh, and so uh, it was uh, some learning that we had to do. Right. I mean, we'd already, you know, you, know, you think, you, you take it that far. Somebody told us that the first seven years was a, the hardest years yeah. of marriage. I don't know if that's true or not, but it seemed like it to us. It was tough, but so was number yeah. eight. Yeah. But, um, but we had to learn to submit mm-hmm. to one another. When that, that scripture says, uh, you know, wives submit to your husbands, well, the husband is supposed to love the wife as Christ loved, loved the church and gave himself for it. And he's supposed to wash his wife yeah. with the water of the word. And so there's a lot of giving and taking that has to be, and bef- up to that point, we probably didn't give and take a whole lot. We were probably no. just very selfish and, yeah. and did what we wanted to do. Yeah, and you know, and like I was telling you about that book that Martin Carey taught, that, their, that class, Love and Respect, <laughs> You know, that's, uh, you know, in the Amplified Version, it, it says that the wife is to honor, uh, honor and respect. And a whole lot of the, other and stuff. And a whole lot of other things they <laughs> do. But that's the main thing. And, and, the, and the man see that he loves his wife. Yeah. So if I love her, you know, I don't want to repeat too much what we said last time, but if I love her, then she's not going to have a, a hard, it's not going to be hard for her to respect me. Amen. So, so men need that respect. Our egos are a little bit bigger, I guess, than, than women's. But, uh, but we have to uh, learn how, to, you know, women have to learn how to respect. People say, well, uh, you know, uh, I may love you, but I don't respect you. No, you can't do that. You know, we've been commanded to love you. Mm-hmm. Amen. And you've been commanded to respect us. And so that's a command of the Lord. Right. And, uh, and once you take it as of the Lord, but see, our, my problem was, I was trying to make her respect me, trying to or, make her or do make me conform, conform to the yeah, word. Yeah. And it's my responsibility to conform to the word. Oh, I do it. It's so, my choice. So we had some adjusting to do. So, so you know, in all the years that we've been married and uh, pastoring the church and in the ministry, you know, we've been we've been around here a long, long time, and uh, and so we've learned some things, you know. And I've learned uh, by counseling untold number of married people. You know, they'd come and they'd, Lord, Pastor, we're getting a divorce and can you help us? And, you know, and usually when they've gone that far, when, you know, when they start talking about divorce, it's hard to turn that train around. Right. And uh, so it's, it's really difficult to do that. But, but uh, it can be done. It can yeah. be done. And uh, so we want every man, and the Bible says God hates divorce. And so we don't want, you know, uh, we don't want you to think that even though God hates divorce, that he's mad at you or something because you have divorce. I don't know the situation that you've been in. I don't, you know, I don't know what you've gone through. And uh, you might have gone through some things that, uh, that I wouldn't put up with for one minute, but you've put up with it for years. And so uh, we have to learn you know, what those things are. But, uh, but you know, if, if people give themselves to the Lord, you know, that, that's the only, the only thing that can save a marriage. No that's matter what, what has happened, no matter, it could have been you know, uh, you be, uh, be abused or, uh, you know, whatever, uh, commit adultery. All those things can be done, uh, can be forgiven. Right. All those things can be forgiven if you love God. But if you don't love God, it's going to be hard. And then you'll start picking out scriptures to justify why you're going to get a divorce. Amen. And so, uh, so you need to start picking out scriptures that will show you how to overcome that and forgive and go on. Amen. And so, uh, you know, we hear this all the time that, you know, I'm going to, I'll forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. We hear that all the time. And, and there's some truth to that. It's hard to forget 
Well, you know what? You can't really you, forget uh, it. That's right. It's it's in your it's in your computer called the brain, and it's hard to forget those things. But you have to work it. But the more you fall in love with God, the less that becomes. Yeah, you get to the place where it's it's don't hinder you yeah. anymore. Yeah. You can think about it without having that pain. And and you know that that if you were now, I mean, if you were then like you are now, that probably would not have happened. Amen. Because, you know, when you get born again, give your life to the Lord, old things pass away and all things become new. And, and so uh, that's in the past. And, and we'll, we'll talk about some of this tonight. Uh, and I don't want to rehash a lot of things that we've already said. All right, but five, there's five areas of contention that every married couple is going to have to deal with. And a lot of times they're going to have some major fights over these that I've... Arguments. Uh, arg fight. Arguments, not fights, but, not fights. but arguments over these. Uh, don't fight. Amen. We don't fight. Amen. So the first one is finances. That, I believe that's the number one thing that's going to cause you, uh, you and your your mate to uh, uh, to have problems. Yeah. You're going to argue and you're going to fight over finances. Money is a big deal. The root of all evil is money. Amen. The love of money, rather. The root of all evil is the love of money. So so you know that's the root. That's the root of the thing. But but money is one of the major factors. You know in uh, in destroying a marriage. And a yeah. lot of the marriages that are destroyed, that end up in divorce, you can investigate, and I guarantee you, money's going to be involved with it. How you spend the money, uh, you know, whatever. A lack of it. Yeah, a lack because of it. Because it brings so much stress. Yeah. And then the first thing you know, you know, one starts accusing the other one. Yeah. You know, you, you spent too much money here. Well, you did this, and you did, you know, and so it just, uh, a I, lack of money brings, a, or... Uh, you know, since some people have a lot of money, but they have a lot of debt. And so, yeah. you know, they're, they're not as going out as, you as fast as it's coming in. And it's just like some, somebody said, you know, well, we're going to go on a budget, but sneak around, that budget's for you, not me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I just couldn't resist it. I just had to buy that. Amen. But, but you expect the mate to stick to the plan. Yeah. Uh, so so, yeah, so that, that's an area of yeah, stress. Money and yeah. a lack of money or to yeah. having too many debt is a huge stress yeah. stress factor in every and, and it's usually a, a lack of money I, you, uh, that that the ones that i've counseled with yeah. over the years it's been a lack of money that's uh, you know the, the money's tight but it's simply because they've spending outside their means yeah. you, you know that saying yeah. when your income exceeds your when your outgo exceeds your income your upkeep will be your downfall yeah well that's the truth and you know uh and you uh, want everything your little beady eyes see yeah you know? And, and, and some people think, if I get out of this yeah. marriage, my mm -hmm. next one will be better, you know. But, you know, I, we have relatives that just jump out of one marriage into another marriage. I'm going to leave that behind. But, yeah. you, you know, most of the time, people who are constantly changing mates, they're the problem. Yeah. It's not, you know, but they think it's the yeah. other, this other yeah. one, you know, so... It, you, if you don't fix whatever right. messed up one marriage, it's going to come over into the next marriage. But a lot of times the man will, or in the woman too, but I find most times it's the man that get out of a marriage because they think, you know, if I, if I got, you know, you're just a, a great, you know, a great liability to our work. You're just a ball yeah. and chain. And, and, and if I got rid of you. Chain. I could have that boat I was wanting, mm. or I could have that new set of golf clubs. I could go on the vacation I wanted, wanted to go on. So they think that they think that if they get away with that problem, yeah. you know, they they look at their mate as the problem, and they think if we get rid of the problem, then all these things are going to be better. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's not. Divorce will cost you. It will cost you more than you realize. You say, well, I, I I just believe that we can do better, and you know, no, it, it's going to. You, it's, it costs you a lot. It, 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 there's some people that have a hard time revamping, re, 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 uh, getting back uh, to where they were because uh, it's not as easy as you think getting back to that because divorce will cost you. Right. You know, I, I know people that, you know, uh, uh, they Christians, or they, they were at one time, and uh, they, got, they got a divorce, and uh, he had a big 401K, and... Uh, and so, she, you know, on the divorce proceedings, she wanted half of that. And uh, she, she had been the one caught in adultery. It's her fault. But she was get, trying to get this guy's money. And, boy, that was tearing him up. But the judge gave her that money. 
God gave her half of it, half of his 401k. As far as we yeah, know. Yeah, well, that, no, he told me that. Okay. He told me that. And so, uh, so he got that 401k, and, uh, you know, and it, so it's cost. And uh, it, it cost that man, it cost, well, it, it cost both of them, you know. Yeah. And so m money eventually run out. Like, no matter how much yeah. it is, it will run out if you don't take care of it, if you don't do some things. And the devourer is not rebuked, amen, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, so anyway, so money is a big factor. Right. So when when you're dating somebody, you think some marrying material, or you're engaged, you're you're going to be married. You need to find out what that person owes, what like eat both of them. Yeah, he, 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 either one, either one of them. You need to find out each other's debts because when you marry someone, you marry their debts. You know, and you need before you get married, you should sit down together with your fiance and work out a, a budget. You yeah. know. Uh, John and I, we had we ha we didn't have a pot in our window. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when we got married, we didn't have and nothing. We didn't have. We had a mobile home on mom and daddy's up on mom and daddy's land, and uh, so uh, uh, John went to Fort Leonard Wood, and and we were going to get married when he got back, and so he started sending money because he had some debts. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what you had a day. I had a car payment. I had, had a, a ring payment. payment. <laughs> and I don't know. So he had some debt. And so he would send the money home to me, and I'd pay whatever he owed. So we actually started putting our money together before we ever got married. And we started, you know, uh, we were just, we you know, we had a budget. The budget yeah. was pay what you can. <laughs> Until the money and, runs and, out. And our parents didn't help us at all. No, they didn't help us at all. And, uh, and so, uh, so that'd be a good thing to make a budget before you get married. And, mm. and, uh, and you know, you can't just buy everything you want. That's right. Because it will cause lots of stress. Because the, the bills will come due. I yeah. guarantee you the bills will come yeah, due. Yeah, y'all have had that little uh, demon sit on your shoulder, sing that song to you. The bills are due, what you going to do? What you gonna do? The bills are due. The bills are due. The bills are due. What you gonna do? And he'll sing that song to you over and over and over again, Amen. And you just throw up your arms. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> but one day we said we're gonna serve God. That's what we're gonna do. You know what John Osteen said? He said he owed so much money. You know, he just kept getting bills coming in, bills coming in. He just pile them up on the up on the table, and and uh, and so people, the debtors would call him, you know, and that wanting their money. And one day, he, he, uh, somebody called, and he said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. He said, if you don't quit calling me and asking me for money, I'm, he said, what he did was he'd just put them in a pile and yeah. shuffle them he up. He said, this way I pay and, my bill. That's the way he pays <laughs> bill. Shuffle them up and pull out a few and pay them. And he told this, this one uh, collector, if you don't quit calling me, I'm not even going to put you in the shuffle. <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> Don't get yourself in that kind of a mess. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and then we talked about this a little bit last week about who can handle the money the best. That's who needs to, you know, pay the bills. Right. And, you know, balance the checkbook. And, uh, and you see, it was sort of dangerous in, in when we first got married because she had a checkbook, I had a checkbook. We didn't have credit cards much in those days. We didn't have credit no, cards. No, but no. people didn't use credit cards in those days. They just used credit. Yeah, and you couldn't, <laughs> you, you couldn't go in the store and expect the credit card machine to be there. No. I mean, that was just no. The big stores maybe, but but anyway, so credit cards were out of out of the. They might have had them in New York City, but they didn't have them in Addison. And so she had a checkbook, and I had a checkbook, and uh, I'd forget to write how much it was when I wrote down. So we'd get overdrawn. And Sheila would, uh, who, when did you write that check? I don't know. I forgot to, I forgot to write it down. So eventually, I, I, quit, I quit carrying the checkbook because it just, you know, we would just forget stuff well, like that. Well, you can't, when, when two people are spending money, one person is trying to keep up with it, that's impossible to do. Yeah. You just, and especially when you're on a very tight budget mm -hmm. and $10 can overdraw the account. I mean, you know, so you may have, Fifteen dollars in the account, and you wrote a sixteen dollar and fifty cent check, and yeah. that's the end of it. You know, so you can't do that. No. One person has to be in Whoever charge can of do the, that. paying the bills right. and writing checks, and the other person either needs a credit card yeah. that you can pay off at the end of every month or cash. Okay, and still under the area of finances, you need to find out, you know, if if the wife is going to work outside the home. 
Now, that's not, not a big deal now as it used to be because m- most women do w- work outside the home. Most women do. But back when we got married, you know, uh, a lot of the women didn't. The things were beginning to change then, but, yeah. but women didn't work outside the home. And the man, a lot of times, wouldn't let their wife work outside the home. And, and so uh, you need to find out, does the wife, do you expect the wife to work outside the home or not? You know, uh, you know, we had two kids, and I, I really didn't want Sheila working outside the home. I tried to, to make enough money that where she could stay home and raise the kids and uh, not have to go to a babysitter. And I, you know, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that's the best thing to do. But for us, you know, I had rather Sheila stay home and me work overtime or work a little bit harder where she would have, where she could stay at home. And so when I did get home, I liked the house clean. And I liked food on the table. I liked all that. And, um, and so, uh, and, and the kids taken care of. And uh, we were raising our kid, no babysitter was gonna do it. And so work, we, we, if you're getting married, you especially, you, 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 get, you need to know, you know, is the wife gonna work outside the home? Yeah. Amen. And, and that's going to solve a lot of problems because... Well, that comes in ru- yeah. making a budget. Yeah. How much money are you yeah, going to have to budget, mm-hmm. to do the budget? And then, you know, still talking about finances, do you trust each other with money? Because some people, you know, don't know how to handle money and they'll sneak around. If you've got to sneak around and spend money and hide it from your husband or wife, I mean, that's wrong. That is wrong. That's wrong. And you're going to be caught up with sooner or later. It's good, but... But we've had to deal with that with people, you know, that have come for counseling, that they, they weren't good money managers. And, uh, and so really, the husband couldn't trust the wife with the checkbook. You right. can understand why a lot of times. And uh, th- they just didn't know how to handle yeah. money. You know, they spend money they didn't have. Yeah, you hear of, of uh, people who, it's like therapy. They go out and buy stuff, it's like a therapy. And I'm like, don't you understand if you buy that on a credit? on a credit card, you're going to have to pay that mm-hmm. off someday. I mean, when I buy something now, I look at it and go, well, like I was going to buy a new purse. So I go down to Belk, $300 for a purse. And I'm like, no way, Jose. You know, I got $300 and I can spend it on a purse, but I don't want to. And I, I think I can find a, you know, better, a bargain better than that. So I go up to TJ Maxx, find me one for $58. So, you know, just because you can buy it or you've got a credit card, all that's come and do. That would stress me to the you uttermost. You know, and I don't I know the it. name of a, a purse or not. Uh, what's the name? I don't know what How they important were. the name Pray is. Pray or fry or something like that. Amen, bro. <laughs> Too expensive. <laughs> not worth it. But, uh, <laughs> but like, that's... that. To some people, that's, uh, that's, that's important. That's important. And if they got the money to do that, If you got let the them money, but if you don't, yeah. and a credit card should be paid off at the end of the month, do you know how much interest they charge on yeah. those things? Yeah. 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 I mean, you can nearly buy something else with the interest that, you, that, that com- is on a credit card. And, you know, I do not like late fees of any sort. not going to pay them. Uh, that's wasted money, whether it's to, to the electric bill, to uh, you know the car payment or whatever, electricity, uh, you know I hate to pay late fees, and so that that irritates me. And so, you know we have settled it. We don't pay late fees. We pay on time or before time yes. if they send us the bill. Amen. As soon as I uh, get the bill. But you know just think that you got a million people and they charge a million people, uh, you know late late fees. And if they just charge one dollar per person. You think well, that's nothing, one dollar? You know, I can live with that. But you, that you just made that company a million dollars, amen. You and um, and, and one, we had everything. one credit card that they would always send us the bill late. Yeah, and we, discover it was. It discover. was a discover card. <laughs> they would and, send and the bill They late. would send us the, the bill late, and you know, like, how can we get this back in time? So we was constantly paying, uh, you know, late fees. wasn't that much. Because you think two or three dollars at whatever it was, it wasn't well, it was that like twenty percent. And uh, crazy. But but anyway, so so we're like we just cut them off. Yeah, we had. We a, don't want your card. <laughs> what the uh, the guy said that, that was a plastectomy. <laughs> <laughs> I said a plastectomy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, who's the guy that does the uh, university? 
Um, Dave Ramsey. Dave, Dave, Dave Ramsey, Ramsey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so cut them cards up. Right, Amen. right. Amen. You don't need them as much as you think you do. Amen. Amen. But now, like, like Sheila and I, I carry a credit card, and I use it quite a bit. But we always pay it but off. But I, I know what we got in there, and I know that we can pay it. But I don't have a checkbook. Right. I don't have a, I don't have or a, a debit, debit card. Debit card he lost I, his debit card, and, and we I never, never got, got another one. one. You don't need two debit cards. Yeah. That's like two checkbooks. Yeah. You get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So I don't, I don't do that. But, right. Uh, but anyway. And so the, the next point of contention, you know, you know, for a mate, is that uh, it's sex. Number one, the one number one is they're gonna fight over money. And when I say fight, argue. they're gonna argue over money, and then they're gonna have a major argument over sex. Now, if you know, we're all adults in here, and we're big enough to talk about it, Amen. And so, uh, so God's the one that created it. God, God created human beings to have sex, and so. Uh, but, you know, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn with passion. And so... Uh, That's when we got married at 18. Yeah. <laughs> I was 18, is 21. Yeah. We got married in a fever hotter than a pepper spray. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we ain't been back to Jackson. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but but that's, that's part of... Uh, that's part of... His needs and her needs. Right. God, God treated us marriage. that way. It, that is it's not ugly. It's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, it's forbidden not by God. God. Because when God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply, now what does that tell you? Replenish. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Fruitful, multiply. <laughs> he expects you to multiply. You ain't going to do that without sex. That's Amen. Right. Be fruitful. You're going to do that without sex. Amen. Right. So he was saying, have sex and have a lot of it. <laughs> That's what, in the beginning. And often, think, do yeah, it often. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Have and, a baby every nine months. Amen. But, uh, but if, you don't want a, if you don't want a baby every nine months, there's a thing called birth control. Right. Amen. And, 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 I, and okay. I'm all for it because uh, I know how many kids we could handle. And, uh, you know, I was in college out in Oklahoma and, and uh, she, we had two kids at the time, and they, Brad was how old? Seven, and Brooke was four. Brooke was four. We and all of a sudden, she starts wanting to have another baby. I said, honey, we can't have another baby. Number one, we had no insurance. Yeah, we didn't have any insurance. We didn't have uh, the, the money to we take care of. We didn't have two pennies to rub no. together, really. We yeah. couldn't afford another one. And so I, I talked her out of that, thank goodness. But you know, we're, <laughs> now, now we would love to have had probably uh, another one, but, yeah. but that's okay. Because I believe that you ought not have kids that you can't take care of. Right. Amen. Right. If you can't take care of them, don't have them. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, people get, you know, oh, why did we do this? How did this happen? I'll tell you how it happened. <laughs> I've been making an appointment with me in the office. Amen. I'll tell you. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, if you don't want a bunch of babies, then you better have birth control. Right. If you're fertile, you, you need to practice birth control. And you need to pick out what's you know, what's best for each of you. I mean, y'all make that decision. Right. You know, uh, it's, not the, it's not the woman's responsibility uh, alone to pick out what kind of birth control. I mean, the, the man's responsibility as much as it is the, the woman. You know, and the husband comes home from work one day and the wife says, you know, guess what? I'm pregnant. Well, how did that happen? You know, like, <laughs> like he didn't have no part about it. Right. Well, he was as much about that, it was as much his responsibility is it is hers. And so y'all need to pick out the type of birth control, you know, that you both like, that you both can live with. And if there's any problems, any problems now that you can't have a healthy sex life, then you need to discuss it with one another. If, if there's some reason, you can't do that. So, so you need to find out about what each other, you know, can uh, live with or uh, is most enjoyable for them. And then y'all pick that out. Amen. So, uh, and then, so, th that, as much as we've taught over the last few weeks, I think that's enough concerning that. But, uh, but sex is important to God. Sex is important to us. And, uh, and it is a major, it can be yeah. a major um, yeah. source of contention in a marriage. Yeah. It really can. And, and you know, there's going to be arguments over that. Yeah. Because man's needs are different than woman's needs. Yeah. Most of the time, not always, <laughs> but most of the time that man requires more sex than a woman does. But that's not the case all the time. Right. And uh, 
So sometimes it's it's right reversed. So it's the individual need. But the Bible need. does say, "Don't defraud. Don't defraud one another. You know, come together. You know, and uh, to keep from the other one, you're running off with another woman or another yeah. man or whatever. So it does, the Bible does instruct women and men, don't withhold yourself from each other unless you know you you just make a decision yeah. to do it, like when you're fasting or something like that. Is what the Bible says. Yeah. Right. So, and and if you don't, you know, if you don't have a healthy sex life, you're causing your mate to start looking. Even though they're Christians, even though they're spirit filled, they have those looks. You don't look. No, 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 no. We don't. We don't go there. <laughs> Amen. We don't. We don't do that. And so, uh, so you have to uh, control what you see and what you, you know, what's going on in in life. But uh, but anyway. So that's a major contention. Yes. And there will be lots of arguments over that yes. if you don't defer one to the other. Yes. Amen. And so sometimes, see, the the dishwasher can be loaded in the morning, folks. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you've got to get to bed now, get to bed while you're both wide awake. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So the, the house can be vacuumed or whatever. Later. Uh, later. Later that day. You don't have to be right then. Amen. Because I'm supposed to be the most important person in her life. You know, besides Jesus Christ, Amen. I'm I'm supposed to be the important. She's supposed to be the most important woman to me in all the world, Amen. So she's number one, and uh, and we try to I try to act like that, make it uh, you know where she knows that I'm that that she's real special in my life, Amen. That mm -hmm. she is the most important thing in my life, mm -hmm. most important human being. And people say, well, what about your kids? No, they come second because someday. They're going to be grown, and they're going to leave the house. Amen. But we're going to be together forever. And I love my kids. And, and, you know, and it's hard to, hard to say, you know, they're more important. But, but this is my wife. This is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. And, they're, and I know my kids are important, and I'm going to take care of them. Because he that provides not for his own is worse than an infidel and denied the faith. But, uh, but we all respect mama. Amen. Everybody respects mom. You know, care I had we had a friend that uh, when Brad was two, I think we went to um, Toronto, Canada, and I never left him before, and so uh, I was worried about leaving him. And a friend of ours said, "You need to understand that your children are only visitors in your home." I've never forgotten that. That and that's the truth. Your children are visitors. They're going to leave in about 18, 20 years. And you're, you're going to be still together. So that, you know, helped me go and leave Brad, and he was fine, you know, and everything. But, but I, I never forgot that. But your children are just visitors in your home. And at one, someday they're going to be gone, and it's just going to be you and your husband. Yeah. And so, you know, they are. Your husband, your mate, is your, the number one. Well, you know, when, when you, the, the woman's working outside the home, uh, you know, you're preparing them for adulthood, and so the uh, you know the children ought to look at dad, you know, and say that's how you treat a woman. Right. I mean that that's how you treat a woman. And so by example, by precept and example, by visualization, they can see, uh, you know, yeah. how how dad takes care of mama. Right. Amen. It makes everybody happy. Right. Amen. Praise God. So, but yeah, I, I can't ever understand. Remember that that. Uh, lady named Susan Smith that she killed her two boys, put them in the back of the car and ran them off in a reservoir. And, uh, you know, that's, yeah. But anyway, so she did that because of a man. Her, of a man, her boyfriend broke up with her because she had those kids and he didn't want to help raise those kids. Honey, once those kids are birthed and the husband and wife leaves, hey man, you protect that child. They're more important to you than that man or that woman. Hey man, so so, yeah, you know, you can go true. to the extreme on either right, side. Right. And so uh, th that was awful. And, you know, I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to desert my children. Right. Amen, for a, a woman or a man. For a man. woman or a right. man. Amen. I, right. I will not do that. Amen. So they're my responsibility. If I don't take care of them, they're worse than an infidel and denied to faith. Yes. And then you <laughs> take care of them until they, get, until they get to be adults, and they take care of themselves. Right. Like Mark Hankins says, there is a God, and I'm not it. Amen. You buy your own car, you buy your, 
You buy your own stuff, amen. Right. There's God. You believe God just like Mama and I did. Yeah. You believe I God. I think, and I think sometimes we we do a disservice to our children because we try to give them everything instead of making them earn it, and then they, you know, they don't take they don't take any pride and they don't appreciate it because you know yeah. they didn't have to work for it in the first place. Yeah. All right, let's let's move on. Yeah. And uh, the third area of contention is family. You know, when I married her, I married her family. And when I married him, I married his yeah. family. And, and, and we, you know, we had some problems because they did things different than us. Amen. When, uh, when we got married. But, uh, but as we grow, grew older, her dad, you know, her dad didn't like me and didn't want me to, you know, to date his daughter. But, she, you know, that, she was stubborn about that too. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, so uh, her dad didn't like me. And, uh, and as a result of that, I didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but I got saved, you know, and I began to treat him with respect and honor. And, uh, and he began to start liking me. Uh, but it, at first, it was, it was difficult. And if we'd had some place to move, we would have moved because we mm -hmm. had a mobile home parked on her dad's property. And, uh, and if we could have hooked that trailer up to that Volkswagen we, <laughs> we owned, <laughs> amen, and I'd pull that thing somewhere else. And his mama didn't like me. That's right. And, and, and she uh, threatened so, to whoop you. Yeah, she, did. <laughs> she threatened to give me a whipping one time. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we had to work some things out mm -hmm. at, when we got married. And, uh, you know, like we said already, you know, when I married him. And that was one reason why my daddy didn't want me to marry John. Because his daddy was an alcoholic. And, and you know. We were poor. It, they were poor. And it was just. You know, it, when you marry a I wasn't family, a good candidate, it didn't look like. Well, his family definitely wasn't a good candidate. He was a good candidate, but his family did cause us some trouble. And and so, and my family caused us some trouble. So we had to learn to I, leave our families and cleave to one another. He had to leave his family. I had to leave mine and cleave to each other and, and make a unit. We were now a family. I, I want, this is my mother and daddy, but now we're the family. This is his mother and daddy, but now we're the family. And I've had to get more than one of them out of jail. <laughs> Your family? Yeah, my family. Yeah. I've had to. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. told y'all some of the tales, yeah. you know, that how he grew up. I mean, it was completely different for me. I was scared of his sisters. He had one sister that went to prison for grand theft larceny. <laughs> and, and so, you know, she but said. But she got saved. Praise she God. did. So I was sitting at the table one time at his mom and daddy's house, and she told me she'd gone to prison. I said, what for? And she told me, and I'm like, what's that? I didn't even know what grand theft larceny yeah. was, you know. And, but she kind of bragged about it, and I think she was kind of trying to scare me, too. You know, and she, and then she told me about pushing a man off the bridge. And I'm like, good Lord, I don't want to ever get this woman mad at me. And I mean, she did, and she did it on purpose, I know, to scare me. So John's family was rough. And my, you know, we were just old country people. <laughs> but my daddy was, he wasn't a pushover either. He didn't do everything right. Daddy, daddy got in trouble for for punching a kid in the mouth in a, at a baseball game. So my daddy had a bad temper, and, um, and, but he wasn't an alcoholic. <laughs> and so both of our families had uh, problems, and we had to work. We had to come together and make but, our family. But your, your father wouldn't re refuse a beer if I gave him one. <laughs> he probably wouldn't. I think he made wine. We found some wine out there. But anyway, <laughs> we lo I love her family. They're just like me. And when... <laughs> Before her dad died, they were making a will. She, he, had a, he had 120 acres of land, and uh, he had four kids, and he was giving every one of them 20 acres. And then he uh, offered us another 20 acres to buy. So we bought 20, and he gave us 20. And, uh, but when we, they were doing that, he was telling me about all that, and he said, and John, I made him put your name on that deed too. And so, so he made sure that my name was on that deed that he'd, where he had given us that property. Right. Because so things have changed, and in the end, I I was his pastor. Right. I wasn't only his son-in-law; I was his pastor. Yeah. Amen. So, just by me getting saved, it changed my family. Yes. One person, one person in in that family. There's you know seven of us kids, mom and daddy. That's nine. But just one person in that family gets saved, changes everything. Right. Changes everything. So so you're an influence. You look might look like your family is. 
uh, you know, cause a lot of problems. You hang in there, love them, and we'll be filling up that baptistry over there, baptizing them, praise the Lord. And so what an honor it was to baptize a lot of my family members. Praise the Lord. We got two more and we got two minutes. We got to hurry up. We got two minutes. Then the next area of contention is the church. Amen. You wouldn't think the church would be an area of contention, but it is. But, uh, you know, some you know some people get on fire for God. They want to come to church all the time. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's the way I was. That's the way you were. Amen. Then there's some people get saved. They don't think they need church. Yeah. And uh, Then so they, they get saved, and he's going here, and she's going there. Yeah. And that's the big problem. Yeah. That one, one was raised this way, and one was raised that way. And so, yeah. you know. Yeah, one's a Methodist, and one's a Baptist. Yeah. And, you know, and so that causes yeah. a huge problem in marriages. Yeah. And so, you know, and that's why I recommend, you know, the, you, you need to find, if lost. you're going to get married and you started dating somebody, find out, you know, are, do you love this church? Is this the church that God sent you here? Then find out if y'all can, uh, y'all can live together with this being the home church. But others say, no, I don't like that church. I don't like that talking in tongues stuff. And there's people like that. Amen. So you need to find out. You need to let them know you do speak in tongues. If you do, you're spirit. If you spirit filled, you need to let them know because some some people don't even know what does that mean. Mm-hmm. What's that strange language coming out of your mouth? Mm-hmm. That, that ought not take them by surprise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They they ought to know that you are spirit filled, and the church is important to you. God sent you to that this particular church if that's what He has. Amen. And you're not you're not leaving it. Amen. So know that right up front. But if you put a man or a woman in front of the church, you're in for trouble. You're in That's for trouble. called idolatry. Yeah. Amen. So you can find a good, if you're Baptist, you can find a good Baptist. If you're a Methodist, you can find a good Methodist. If you're a, well, I, I, well yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> if, you're, if you're charismatic, then you can find somebody that right. really means what they believe. Amen. Then, so we'll, we'll go on in. The, so the church is a big area. Right. Big area. And we can spend some time on that. Amen. But, but the last thing is communication. Not knowing yeah. how to communicate. Right. You or know, not communicating. Yeah, because uh, Sheila and I, man and woman, got two different languages. Yeah. Amen. What she says, you know, I don't understand what she's saying. <laughs> evidently. Because I didn't do it or whatever. But, <laughs> but, uh. But anyway, didn't follow my instructions. we didn't, you know, th- we think different. We think different. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And I really highly recommend that book. That is the truth. I don't know if it's still in print or not. I don't know if it's still in print. But if it's still in print, I recommend that book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Because, uh, you know, one has a, a way of doing things and different than the other one. You know? Men and women are not made like contrary to what... Uh, our government would have us to think. You know, when we got married, men are men and women are women, and never the twain shall change. When when we got married, Sheila couldn't cook, and that's just being honest. She didn't know how to cook, so we we she experimented on me, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> amen. But she kept doing it until she got it right. But anyway, so when we got married, all that she knew how to cook was potato salad <laughs> and green beans. I didn't know how to cook green beans. Well, we had them. <laughs> baked beans, I guess. Maybe that's what it was, baked, baked beans. beans, not green beans. Baked beans. So we had baked beans and potato salad. <laughs> that's all she knew how. She got the baked beans out of the can, I'm sure. <laughs> Amen. So so baked beans and potato salad. So she would ask me, don't you don't you just love potato salad or something like that? And, uh, you know, I don't love them. They're, they're pretty good, but I don't love them. So that would make her mad because I didn't love them. See, I was saying I like them. She was saying she loved them. Don't you love them? Well, to love, that means lay down my life for you, sacrifice myself for you, you know, all those things, but not over potato salad. So I like them, but I couldn't say I love them. Amen. Put some ice cream on it or something. Like and so our language is different. We had different type of language. And, man, and so you have to learn how to communicate to one another. And now we know that I can think something and she'll hop right to, there to it. I was just thinking that. And that's just living with somebody as long as we have. But, but learning to communicate with one, one another. She knows what I mean. Amen. So, uh, and I, I do pretty much her too as well. So God is good in he? Hallelujah. Everybody's needs met.
Praise God. You learn anything through these last weeks? Amen. And even though, you know, a lot of us are married, some of us are divorced and single, but this is good for you. Amen. Especially, you know, if you're single and you plan to get married. It's like a refresher course. Yeah, it's a refresher course. And the people watching us on the Internet, I don't know how many people are watching us on the Internet, but it's helped a lot of people on the Internet. And uh, so marriage, you've got strong marriages, you've got a strong church. Amen. You'll you have a strong church. And, uh, and just if every family was on fire for God, you know, husband and wife working together, my goodness, the rapture would have already took place and we'd be out of here. Amen. So, amen. So anybody got any questions before we leave tonight? All right. Well, bless you all. We love you. Thank you for coming. Bless all you on the Internet. We'll see you all the next time. God bless. Sunday. Yes, amen. 10.30. Praise oh, the Lord. Also, Sunday morning, we're at the uh, Essentials classes serving breakfast at a uh, quarter till nine, till 9.15. So y'all over at the FLC if y'all want to come. You don't have to be a member of that class.